Hello and welcome back. You're here with Pocket 83 listening to the smooth sounds of the 70s. Not bad, right? I know this is a step up because you're used to listening to me through one of these. It sounds like this. Welcome back to my one of my laboratories where safety isn't exactly one of my priorities. This is a long overdue upgrade. So I'm supposed to do some sort of podcast and no I'm no more on that but I do lots of voiceover work as well so it was time this is a microphone it's a blue yeti and this is a pop filter and this is all foam and cardboard and this box I'm going to upgrade a little bit by making it a little more <coughs> well, presentable, so that it, it can function as a little storage cabinet to rest right there. So I'll talk a little bit about how it's made, and I'll show you a little bit about um, the difference in audio. And you can judge for yourself, and perhaps give me some feedback. I'll discuss this pop filter at the end. It's made out of some nylons and an old lid and some copper wiring. I'll show you in detail later on. But first, let's move on to this thing. There is a lot to talk about as the glue gun heats up. Yes, that's correct. I'm using a hot glue gun to hold this all together. Even though it's a piece of furniture that I'm likely going to set stuff on top of and probably rest my feet on. And for that reason, I'm going to double up the cardboard. Cardboard is a negligible expense, and glue sticks are reasonable enough a sacrifice. After I double all the walls, I'm going to cover it in craft felt, and that will give it a nicer appearance. Let me state the purpose of this thing, though. There are two purposes. One is to capture stray sound waves and kind of reduce ambient noise. Now think about the geometry of this. Sound waves that go in to those little ch foam chambers don't want to really come out, and it really works. And it's very lightweight, so if you stick your head in it, it makes a lovely, comfortable hat that has a really calming feeling to it because it becomes quiet. Anyway, its second function is that of a cabinet because I'll be able to slide it against my computer desk and store away all of my microphone goodies and keep it dust free and protected. And of course its secondary benefit to me is that it's an additional hundred square inches of horizontal surface. And that's useful in the office because I will probably be setting the camera on it just in day-to-day -day use. Now let's look at its construction and consider its geometry. It's made from double-walled cardboard and it has a 13-inch diameter. It's a circle with a 13-inch diameter and it's been cut flat at about three and a half inches from the center. The single piece of cardboard that makes up its side wall is 18 inches tall and it's about 30 inches around. I clamped the base circle down and then bent the cardboard around and as I held it in place I used hot glue and then I put a bead in the in inside corner all the way around to make it really strong. The foam blocks are all one and a half inch cubes and I built them from bottom up, stacking them by gluing them to the back foam. This is just a piece of one inch foam that went around first, and this is a point of interest. Gluing two pieces of foam together with hot glue at first attempt seems as though it doesn't work, but that's because the glue isn't cooling. It can't dissipate its heat because, well, foam rubber is such a good insulator, so you have to hold it for a while. The working time is probably 10 seconds per cube. There are obvious pros and cons to having such a long working time, but overall, I have to say that this project was thoroughly enjoyable, 
and it really turned out well. Okay, on with it. To make all of the cubes, I used a bandsaw, and I just set the fence to an inch and a half. This part of the process is very easy and very fast, and it can be very scrap efficient. But it's important to note that whenever you're pushing it through, you should always use a push block made of foam, a sacrificial push block. And I'm not saying that explicitly for the purposes of safety, but because the foam rubber when you push it through with your finger, it's easy to not push it through straight. But when you're using a foam block, it, it gets it through perfect every time. You can even use two at the same time, one from the back and one from the side, and push it through that way as one piece. This part is a bit of an afterthought. I have a piece of craft foam here, and I used spray adhesive to stick a piece of craft felt to it and it makes a nice little recess that fits the mic stand perfectly. But it was a bit of an oversight because, because I had already glued some of my foam blocks to the base. So a couple of them had to get yanked out for me to do this. That's better. I still have a few to repair. This is the fun part. On video it might look tedious, but it wasn't at all. I found it amusing. <laughs> And while we're in here, take note that the USB cable comes in right there. Before we start construction with cardboard, a quick Cardboard 101 about the brilliant design that is cardboard. It actually has a specific axis of strength. Look at it up close. Every other layer consists of a corrugation, and that corrugation causes it to have, well, beam-like structures that move in this direction. It gives it this property that it bends this way, but it's very strong this way. A good metaphor to help you think about it would be to bridge building. This little beam assembly has a lot of strength in one direction, but virtually zero in the other. Around the side I'm going to orient it the same way that I did before, but on the top I'm going to make it so that these tubules are perpendicular to one another. That will give it strength in the same way that plywood strength is achieved. I'm going to tape the two sides together because it kind of bellied out here in the middle, and so if I hold it with some tape just long enough until the glue cools on the sides, then I can cut the tape off later. Okay, two more quick notes about construction and then I'll get on with it. The cardboard has a natural sort of crown to it and I'm putting the second sidewall in in the opposite crown direction as the first so as to try to neutralize that. The second thing I want to say is that the sidewall is going on first this time and then the top cap and that way it will help to distribute any load, any weight down to the sidewalls.
Hey, how's it going? I'm from the future, and this project, from my point of view, is all completed, and I'm using it to record this message to you. You might be wondering what's going on here with the heat gun. I'm doing it because the hot glue gun can't keep up. It can't melt the glue as fast as I need it to melt. So I'm just keeping it warm with the additional heat from the heat gun. For cutting around this thing, I scored it first with a utility knife and then I finished it with the hacksaw blade. You don't have to do it, but it was quite easy to do. Okay, all that's left is to cover it in felt, and believe it or not, this is the easy part. I'm just going to lightly coat with spray adhesive the box while it's sitting in this position so I can't get any sticky stuff on the inside. And I'm also going to do the fabric. And that's it. Let's take it up and do some audio tests on it. We'll put it in place and then I'll tell you a little bit about the pop filter. Testing, testing. This is my voice from this angle and I'm talking around the pop filter. Here's what happens when we put the pop filter in place. Can you discern any difference at all? It takes away the p, d, b, the b's and the d's and the p's. It makes them far less aggressive. And this is what I sound like through this contraption that I've just gone through all of that trouble to make. Uh, I really just wanted to have the ability to record narration in here without having to worry about the sounds of the computer. So I hope that it will be an improvement. You may be wondering about the flat design of this box, because if you're anything like me, you may have some preconceptions about the way that you're supposed to hold a microphone, but actually you're not supposed to talk down into it so much. You're supposed to kind of aim yourself directly at the front of it.
And at last, we come to the pop filter. As promised, it's made from an old pair of pantyhose. And this is just a lid, a screw-on lid from oh, an old plastic jug. So I cut the lid, both parts of it off, and then cut out the center bit. Now you just stretch the pantyhose around, secure with a rubber band, and there you have it. It's replaceable. This is copper wiring, which I'm sure that you're aware of by now. is one of my favorite crafting mediums, and I just looped it all the way up around the lid, back down, and then made loops at the end so that it would wrap around the piece of threaded rod that's on the other end of these thumb screws. It does adjust, but there's really no point in doing so because the microphone has to be pretty much permanently stationed in the upright position. It might be hard for you to tell the difference through the camera. This part is the lid, and this part is the copper wiring. That's it for this one. I really appreciate your patience. This was a long and tedious video. There was a lot of information contained within this and it was a bit of a technical achievement to me. So I hope that it will help me to provide better content in the long time to come. See you next time.